To get the most complete picture of ensemble-based forecasts, we need to discuss the blending of ensemble systems and the combining of deterministic models into blends. This poses an interesting set of questions when you look at the number of models that can be combined into something like the National Blend of Models. It moves from 100 members in the Grand Ensemble, beyond 84 hours, to as many as 267 constituents within 84 hours. As we mentioned in the previous lesson on defining model grid spacing and what is resolvable, it's not as simple as whether NWP can resolve a thunderstorm or not, but rather whether it aliases what should be isolated storms as an MCS. Now we are moving into mixing models that can resolve individual thunderstorms like the deterministic 3km HER with the 25km GEFS that probably will not resolve individual storms. If we are moving this coarser grid resolution data into a finer grid output, there has to be a way to mix different resolvability scales together. Let's look at a subset of models that the NBM uses to show why mixing resolvability and blends can be problematic. Instead of downscaling global and mesoscale models onto the 2.5 km grid for the NBM, interpolation is used. If we look at a subset of the different models that go into the NBM, the GFS, the NAM, and the HER, we can quickly see several things that stand out. The first is that the raw GFS data does not line up with the grid orientation of the NAM and the HER. This is where the first step in model blending takes place. You have to make sure that the models are aligned onto the same grid spacing and orientation. The GFS data comes in a lat lawn projection, but the NAM and the HER are in Lambert conformal. In blending these different projections, will data be lost in the conversion? The second is that we can see the increasing amount of detail over Colorado, from broad grid areas in the GFS that are cooler than others, to seeing the temperature differences between the mountaintop 14ers and river valleys below in the HER. How do you not lose information from the high resolution models like the HER, such as terrain influences, but add information from coarser resolution models? There are different types of interpolation that can be performed on the model inputs to get them all to the same 2.5 km resolution. The NBM uses three different types of interpolation depending on what meteorological parameter is being worked on. These three types are found in the description of field selected algorithms for the National Blend of Models document that you can find in the References tab of this lesson. The key point is that there are a bunch of intermediate steps from the raw model output down to the blend which can result in losing some key details and information. Sometimes, even once these steps are completed, errors can still sneak through. An example of this was when meteorologists in the field noticed that there was a lattice-like feature in the snow output. This was because the input into the quantile mapping and dressing for precipitation for the ECMWF had this lattice-like structure in the data. Smoothing out the ECMWF data resulted in a cleaner input for the NBM and the lattice-like structure was mostly removed. The key takeaways are that there are compromises that you have to make in order to mix models of different resolutions and resolvability. Although blending models of different resolutions helps to build out the probabilistic data by increasing the number of samples available, how those data are interpolated or changed to meet a final resolution will likely result in some changes to the data, something you need to consider when evaluating probabilistic forecast information.